Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today we're going to be going over the topic of required maintenance inspections for aircraft. Um, we're going to go deeper and then just talking about the annual inspections or the 100-hour inspections. We're also going to be talking about all the various other types of equipment inspections that are necessary for keeping an aircraft airworthy. Um, so follow along, and if you get a chance, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you get notified when I come out with my new videos. Okay, we're going to go over the required maintenance inspections for an aircraft. Uh, first, we have the annual inspections. Annual inspections are, are described and defined per the FAR 91.409 Section A. Um, with an annual inspection, an aircraft is required to have a complete inspection every year. The annual must be properly endorsed by a mechanic with an inspection authorization, or IA, uh, within the preceding 12 calendar months. For example, if the aircraft's annual is endorsed on December 15, 2022, the next annual is due before January 1, 2024. A ferry permit is required to fly an aircraft that's out of annual, such as to fly the aircraft to another airport for the inspection. Uh, contact your local FISDO uh, for instructions on applying for a ferry permit. The next type of inspection we have is the 100-hour inspection. Uh, the 100-hour inspe inspection is again per FAR 91.409 Section B. Um, aircraft being used for compensation or hire must have a thorough inspection every 100 hours, uh, meaning that if the aircraft is carrying any person um, on board other than a crew member, or if the aircraft is being used for, let's say, flight instruction, a 100-hour inspection is required. Uh, the 100-hour limitation may be exceeded by not more than 10 hours while en route to reach a place where the inspection can be done. So let's say, for example, um, you're 99 hours um, up on your 100-hour, toward your 100-hour inspection, and you have to fly the plane two hours to take it to a airport where a mechanic could work on it to do the 100 hour. Uh, that would bring you to 101 hours. So for your next 100 hour, 100 hour inspection, you'd have to do it in 99 hours. Um, the excess time used to reach a place where the inspection can be done must be included in computing the next 100 hours of time and service, as I just explained. This inspection is identical in many ways to the annual inspection, with the main difference being that with the annual inspection, it can only be conducted by airframe and power plant uh, mechanics with a specific inspection authorization capability. Versus the 100-hour inspection, it can be done with simply an A&P mechanic. Uh, the next type of inspection we have is known as the progressive inspection or inspections. Um, these again per 91.409D. Uh, this is used to minimize maintenance downtime. Owners may opt for this progressive um, inspection plan. Uh, typically, flight schools or FBOs um, may take advantage of progressive inspections to help um, smooth out the costs that they incur during these inspections. Um, owners must apply to a flight standards district office or a FISDO to get approval for a progressive inspection for an aircraft. Unlike an annual or 100-hour inspection, a progressive inspection allows for more frequent but shorter inspection phases as long as all of the items required for the annual and 100-hour inspection are uh, completed within the required time. Case in point. Flight school aircraft that must comply with 100-hour inspections often use four inspection phases at 25-hour intervals. The inspection cycle is completed when the last inspection is endorsed. The authority to use a progressive inspection plan is non-transferable. Once the aircraft is sold, an annual or, if applicable, 100-hour inspection must be endorsed within 12 calendar months or 100 hours of the last complete cycle. Airworthiness directives. Um, these uh, need to be evaluated and looked at and, com and complied to, and it's usually done at the annual 100-hour inspection if there's new ADs coming out. Uh, ADs and compliances, uh, or compliance is per FAR Part 39. All ADs must be in current compliance per FAR 91.403A, which references Part 39. There must be a list of all ADs that apply to an aircraft kept with the aircraft records. This means your, uh, um, your airframe and your engine logbooks. Only the persons authorized as mentioned in the AD are allowed to perform this type of inspection. The authorized, uh, the authorized personnel are typically the FAA certified repair station or AMP mechanic that can actually perform the inspection or um, comply with the directives that are in the ADs. Next, we have the altimeter or pitot-static system inspection. Uh, this is uh, more germane for IFR uh, flown aircraft, uh, but there is some relationship to VFR as well we'll get into. So altimeter inspection is per FAR 91.411, uh, Section A. 
Within the preceding 24 calendar months, each static pressure system, each altimeter instrument, and each automatic pressure altitude reporting system must be tested and inspected and found to comply with Appendices E and F of Part 43 of this chapter in order to operate on an airplane or helicopter in controlled airspace under IFR, Instrument Flight Rules. Um, that all said, per the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 8, if an altimeter is determined to be off by more than 75 feet from the surveyed elevation, the instrument should be referred to a certified instrument repair station for recalibration. So if you're flying your airplane VFR, VFR operations, and you notice that the altimeter is more than 70 feet off than the surveyed elevation, you really need to get it in and, and have it looked at and get it repaired. Uh, the next um, required inspection is uh, ATC transponder inspection. Uh, again, per 91.413 section A. The transponder must be inspected every uh, 24 calendar months. No person may use an ATC transponder unless within the preceding 24 calendar months the ATC transponder has been tested and inspected and found to comply with Appendix F of Part 43 of this chapter. Additionally, the installation or, of, of, or modification to a transponder must be inspected for data errors as well. ELT, Emergency Locator um, Transmitter Inspection. ELT um, inspections are per 91.207 Section D. An ELT must be inspected within 12 calendar months after the last inspection for proper installation, battery corrosion, operation of the controls slash crash sensor, and sufficient signal strength. Per 91.207C, batteries associated with the ELT must be replaced or recharged if the battery is rechargeable when, one, the transmitter has been in use for more than one cumulative hour, or 50% of their useful life has expired as established by the ELT manufacturer under its approval. And the last type of inspection um, is the VOR equipment checks or inspections. Uh, this is associated with uh, the VHF omnidirectional range radios um, and is again associated with IFR type operations per 91.171. Uh, specifically under VOR checks or inspections, no person may operate a civil aircraft under IFR using the VOR system of radio navigation unless the VOR equipment of that aircraft has been operationally checked within the preceding 30 days and was found to be within the limits of the permissible indicated bearing error set forth in paragraph B or C of this section. So those are the inspections that are required to keep an aircraft airworthy and hopefully you found this video useful and if you did consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next new video. Also, if you have any questions or comments regarding these types of inspections, feel free to uh, ask those questions or put those comments down below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can.